Hey, welcome to another episode of Inside the Sherman Playhouse, and we really are inside the Sherman Playhouse in the bowels of the theater. In, uh, but it's actually pretty cool in here. It's the uh, women's dressing room, and I caught Jane Farnell coming out of the car, and she said, okay, I'll do this interview. Um, and we've been doing a lot of people that have been veterans of the, uh, the community, uh, this theater, um, other surrounding theaters, Brookfield Theater Works, Richfield Barn, stuff like that. And I asked um, Jane to be a part of this, um, this great series that is very interesting and informative. Um, Jane is not of an American descent. No, nope, I'm a Brit. <laughs> she's a Brit. I'm a Brit. And she um, started pretty young. Why don't you tell us how it all started as far as theater is concerned? Well, it all started because I wanted to be a ballerina. Ah. And so my family were Navy, Royal Navy from beginning to end, and I decided I wanted to go to a stage school. But I couldn't cut it as a ballerina, so, I, but I did go to the stage school, and then I went to RADA, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, right. in the late 50s, and um, by that time I was hooked. And then my mother and I came out to America in 1960, when I was 18. You can do the math. Yep, I got that. <laughs> And um, I fell in love with America. Mm. And so I said to Mother, I'm going to New York to make my fame and fortune. And she said, I think I'll stay too. And she started looking after children. It was the 60s and British nannies were in, you know. Oh, yeah. And, but my mother had never worked a day in her life and <laughs> scandalized her friends at home. But she did, and she started a career at 50, and I started a career at 18 and had a marvelous... 10 years in New York um, until I met my husband mm -hmm. at the American Shakespeare Festival Theatre in Stratford in the glory days, the Joseph Verna Reed days on the banks of the Housatonic. Oh, wow. Glorious, glorious, yeah. um, glorious theatre. And in rep, so you, you got to do so much Shakespeare. But I had the understudies luck. Everybody that I was understudying left. Carrie Nye, who mm -hmm. was married to Dick Cavett, she and Cyril Richard had this huge fight three, four days before the press opening of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was playing the first fairy. And she stormed off and said, I'm out of here. So the first fairy, me, got to play Titania for the rest of the run. Oh, wow. Which was lovely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Get a photo of this she, she brought in. And uh, she is Titania on the right from the Midsummer Night's Dream. It's a beautiful picture. This is from Stratford. And this is Stratford, okay. Connecticut, in 1967. 1967. Yeah, it's, they've been trying to revive it. Yes. Forever, and yes. it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. Because it went into such disrepair. But it was, I was there for two years, and it was just. It was wonderful. I know, I wish I was there. It's just wonderful. And so when you met your husband, he was from England? No, he's American. Oh, he is American. Yes, okay. he's American. His father, Bob Tucker, was a choreographer of note, and he was doing the choreography for Midsummer Night's Dream because he and Cyril had worked together, and Ian, my, my husband, dear ex-husband, um, <laughs> was playing Peace Bottom in that photograph, but they needed fairies, so I thought... I'll go and I'll audition, and I got hired by Ian's father, wow. and I finally got into to Stratford. Wow! And had a marvelous time playing Phoebe and um, As You Like It, and various other things, and worked with people like Boris Karlovsky and mm. Sarah Richard. Sarah Richard. All of whom are in the heaven for actors up there. Yeah, Annals. <laughs> um, so that's where you started getting equity points. Uh, no, I had right. done that prior. Okay. In 1961, I went to a place called Allenbury Playhouse. Oh, my, my cousin's from there. Really? Yeah. Boiling Springs, yep. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yep. And we went as, well, we were called junior staff, but we were just apprentices. Okay. But it did count, and it was a long season, February through November. But again, the ingenue didn't show up. So I got to play Sabrina and Sabrina Fair. Oh, wow. And uh, just a massive stuff, which was a, a wonderful, wonderful training and made some 
close friends that I still know yeah. to this day. And obviously you had Rada behind you. Yes. And then did you get your equity points there? Or? After Allenbury, yes. After Allenbury. Yes. Yeah. Was it harder then than it is now or easier or how do you well, feel? You had to do enough weeks. Okay. I think it's different now. Okay. The point system, there wasn't that. If you've right. done enough weeks, um, but I am getting an equity pension, which is nice. Yeah, that's great. Not yeah. much. But then yeah. after that, um, things were just marvelous in New York in, in the 60s. You know, oh, yeah. I worked at Circle in the Square. Right. And Trojan women with crazy, crazy uh, Nikos Sakharopoulos, oh. also up there in Actors <laughs> Heaven. Um, went on tour with the Trojan women. Were you in it? Yes. What did you play? One of the chorus. Oh, okay. There were 14 women. I was beside it, but that was in college. Uh, 14 <laughs> women, one small boy, three dogs, a couple of parakeets on a bus touring colleges. Oh, my God. As far west as um, Iowa. Wow. And your husband had been is working steadily at the same time? Yes. Yeah. No, I hadn't met him then. Oh, you hadn't met him? No. Okay. I, I okay. jumped forward to Stratford. Okay. I was still about 64. Um, I met him at 67. Yes, he... He actually bought his contract out of Stratford and went back to do a um, revival of West Side Story at Lincoln Center. His sister-in-law was Lee Theodore. Again, she started an um, organization called the American Dance Machine. Mm -hmm. And she resurrected all the old choreography from way back. It, it wow. was sort of neat. But Ian bought his contract out and went to do West Side. He played action. Wow. Yes, and he kept working until my daughter, our daughter, Joanna, was born in 1970. Wow, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, when's the, uh, the, the trek to, to this part of the country, oh, Connecticut? That's a long story. <laughs> uh, when Joanna was uh, college age, she decided she was going to go to Boston and quit her skating career. She'd been a, oh, right. a yep. competitive ice skater. Um, so... <clears throat> I wanted to be somewhere near her. Right. At that time, I had I had moved to Maryland, but I wanted to get closer than taking a plane from Pittsburgh. So somebody said, "Oh, there's a wonderful little place called Kent, Connecticut." <laughs> That's great. And what the, year was this? This is nineteen. Wait a minute. She was born in seventy. Nineteen ninety. Oh, twenty years later. Okay. Yeah. So she. So I um, thought, okay, Kent's good. Because my grandfather in England lived in the county of Kent. So I thought this is a little oh, um, yeah, And so um, I found a place and I said to my mother, stop working, come to Kent. It's like an English village. Gotcha. And um, then I thought, oh, well, there's some very good. And did you feel that you were retired at that point or were you doing more acting? You know, if if you got any offers or in New York or anything like that. No, I wasn't. I wasn't going to pursue the New York scene anymore. Okay. I, okay. I it, it was just um, I wanted to be closer to Joanna. I, I didn't okay. want to. I mean, the the things like the soap operas that I was on. I was on right. two Guiding Light and As the World Turns. This we're back in the sixties now. Okay. Um, and I knew that. I was getting a bit long in the tooth <laughs> for soap operas, for on camera stuff. <laughs> but I did do voiceovers during that period. Um, right. But no, I fell in love with the country, and being away from New York was a joy. That's cool. And so I thought, and you could always visit it. Yeah. Yeah. Or audition if I wanted. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah. But when I discovered what good theatre there was up here, oh. like Sherman and Theatre Works and Brookfield. I thought, oh, well, maybe this is what I should be doing with the second half, so to speak. Right. And um, I'd never directed. Oh. But I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. So I came to this theater and presented, I have to check, <laughs> Arms <laughs> and the Man. Ah. And this was in 1997. Yes. And um, it was just wonderful. Because I love Shaw sure. and Shakespeare. Sure. And that led to 11 shows here, right. directing, and a total of 31 in 15 years. Wow. Tell me a few of the actors in Arms and the Man. Are they still around? Adam Battlestein. Adam Battlestein. Okay. A lovely girl called Jessica something, <laughs> who I always thought was going to be a big star, but she's vanished. Um, yeah. the, the dear husband of Jeannie McRoberts. Right. 
who's passed away. Right. Um, Joanna. Yep. Uh, oh, Billy Dempster. Oh, okay. Yes. Right, that so the, these people are common names these days. Common except names. for Jessica something, she's out there somewhere. She's out there. <laughs> Last time. Doing something. Waitress, waitress singing here. <laughs> well, that's you know, part but of the But by that time, the, the directing bug had bitten me. Right. Big time. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Right. So you directed for here, Brookfield, and Theater Works. I think, was there anywhere else? Um, I oh, the, let's talk about the Kent players. Oh, the Kent players yeah. were so Is much that where fun. you started? No, no, no. No, I that was here. here. Okay. Uh, the Kent players, where I met Catherine Alquist, who is mm -hmm. well known here, um, and there's a there's a congregational church in Kent, and next door is the community house, mm -hmm. and my little house at the time was right next wow. to that. So I remember that we was were doing. A dream. It was. <laughs> we were doing something, and and I had some valuable props. And I used to wheel them in a wheelbarrow oh my God. between the community house and oh, my wow. house. Um, was it liaison? Or? It might have been liaison. Yeah. yeah. But we did some very good stuff there. Yeah. Um, my wife, Stacy Lee, just loved working with Jane. Still does. Yeah, and, we got uh, to get her in something. And, 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 you know, all these Susie Abrams, all these people. We had such fun here, your wife yeah. and I, in stepping out. Right. Which I want Where to you learn to tap dance. Yes. Yes. I want to revive it because it's so much fun. Yeah. yeah. It's a, a, quite a few ten actresses and one guy. There you go. But great fun about this group that go to tap class. It's it's fun. <laughs> um, yes, that was Stacey. Yeah. She was and good you're, at that. You're pretty well known for the one woman shows that you direct. Oh, my favorites. Yeah. Tell me about those. Well, three of them. The first one was. T at five about Catherine Hepburn with Noelle Desiata. Mm -hmm. The second. Is that the one, first time you worked with her? No, we worked in Holiday Memories. Okay. And Medea. Oh, that's oh, Medea was before that. Okay. And Laramie Project. That was before that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, the second one woman show was uh, Golda's Balcony. That was the second one. With Sonny Osborne Sonny about Golden Hair. Yeah. Yep. Powerful piece. Saw that. Beautiful. Powerful piece. Beautiful. And the third one was very close to my heart because I had made, well, I had, yes, I had made friends with Lynn Redgrave before she was She was in, in the head. area. She lived in Kent. Yeah. Yes. And we used to go to New York and things. And anyway, um, her play, Shakespeare for My Father, which is about her, Lynn's relationship with Michael Redgrave, Michael, right. who was a difficult man, mm -hmm. um, a beautiful piece, and Susie Pettibone played that, mm -hmm. one woman again, and, um, and they were all successful, incredibly. All successful. I mean, TF5 had to tour. TF5, we toured. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. toured Connecticut. Yeah. I think it was like five or and he, six. And he was a, a local uh, writer uh, who wrote TF5. You're I'm going right. to ask me his name. It's not no, I don't remember TV. his name, but it's we know he's a local local. Yes, yeah. yes, and uh, Joe Russo had contact with him. He came. Um, we kept it from Noel. In fact, it was Stacy because Stacy was right. stage managing. Right. And I said she can't know that the writer is out there tonight. Right. Because she will freak <laughs> out. Um, but he came back afterwards, and he said it was the closest to how he had envisioned his play. Being oh, that's performed. great. That's great. Yeah. Well, she was it. She was superb. She was it. And it all started with a joke. Um, somebody at some party, a couple of years prior to when we first did it, we first did it in 2008, somebody said, we were doing voices, mm -hmm. and somebody said, so what can you do, Noelle? And she <laughs> launched into Catherine Hepburn. And I want to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe said... Hey, there's a play out there called T at Five. Oh wow, Joe! It was it was amazing, just amazing. She was. Um, it's interesting how these things blossom out of something. Well, it's interesting how things sort of six degrees and all of that. Separate, yeah, know, absolutely. It, it's all connected. Absolutely. So, um, you're still here. You're still directing right now. You're directing. Let us know. I am directing and having great fun with The Lion in Winter, a wonderful play by James Goldman down at Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Lovely bunch of people, lovely bunch of actors. Vicky Sosby and Bob Lussier are the king and queen. Fantastic. We're two weeks in, we open March 9th. Okay, cool. And then let's give Theatre Works a plug. 
Theatre Works. Which you are on the board of. Which I'm on the board of. Yep. Um, All My Sons by Arthur Miller in September. One of my favorites. Yes. That's going to be great. Total change from Land in the Winter. I know. Families. How about coming back here? I Am I on camera? <laughs> <laughs> yes. We will, yeah, uh, we we'll, we'll, be yeah, we'll be talking. We'll be talking. We'll be talking. No, it's fun. I did what do you think about this playoffs? I mean, you say, well, how about coming back here? What's what's attractive uh, about this? Well, this is the first one, Arms and the Man, all the way right, back. Right. But what you've done with this theater is remarkable. Oh, thank you. Production-wise, um, the shows have all been extremely good. I mean, in the old days, in the 97 days, we had some doozies. <laughs> I won't name them. <laughs> and none of them were mine, of course. Right. Well, we're 100 years old, so yes. we're... <laughs> but no, it's lovely, and the, the word is out that this is a good place to be, to, oh, to nice. act in and to direct nice. in, and, you know. Thank it's you. All good. Yeah, I maybe. mean, all the theatres have wonderful things And we share them. actors. Yes. We share actors, we share directors, yes. we all know each other. Um, we can't all do the same shows no. at the same time, no. you know. No. Although sometimes we open on the same weekend, but we yes. try not to do that. Try sure. not to do that because then, <laughs> where shall I go? Where shall you go? Yeah. Well, we so. do four weekends. No, but it's a it's a thriving, full blooded community theater thing. Up there. Yeah, I think um, a lot a lot of these people have been trained. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, and um, the older ones. Um, have been, uh, you know, done the real thing. Yeah. And a lot of them have come, in, especially on this program, and have said, I get to do this part. Mm -hmm. You know, they wouldn't let me. You know, yeah. your poor husband, I didn't want to say it at the time, because he was probably young, but he had, he was Peace Blossom, and I'm sure he, he went up to play Oberon later on, yeah. and all those other huge parts, yeah. you know. So, now, I've had fun acting on some of these stages right. as well. Right. Um, done some stuff at Theatre Works, and done some stuff here. And that's fun because um, the pressure of a professional job is great. Right, time-consuming. Yeah, and yep. much more relaxed here. And yep. much, much more fun here. I, I always say we can't have fun doing this. Oh, absolutely. You know? absolutely. You're doing something very interesting. <laughs> yeah, right now we're, um, we are we have a good uh, relationship with the JCC these yes. days. And you've been there. and. Um, Good stuff. So we were doing dinner theater there. The last one you liked was Picasso. Yes, that was lovely. That's La Penangile. And uh, so I, I started uh, thinking about, well, what can we do that's not dinner theater? And so we're doing a uh, um, Shakespeare love scenes for the Valentine's Day um, mm -hmm. weekend. And some people say it's the weekend before because it's on a Wednesday. And some people say it's the weekend after. So I'm doing the weekend after, whatever weekend people after. say. That's yeah. so the weekend after. And we're doing a lot of our Sherman um, Playhouse people, obviously Theatre Works people. Wherever they've been, they're, they're doing some good stuff over there, some good scenes. So um, you say you'll be in the audience. I will. <laughs> and I hear by the grapevine that you are an extremely good person to work for. Oh, thank you. That you're a very good director. Thank you. And that you, well, you do. You. I'll direct you sometime. If... Yeah, <laughs> but don't you coach um, audition? Yes, actors I, for audition. Audition techniques for actors, and basically, you know, Stanislavski method. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, you know, we'll, we'll uh, we got running a little bit out of time. But what? How do you feel about um, what, what? What method were you taught? At Rada, did they even touch Stanislavski? No. At <laughs> was you, it all about Gilgood and the? Uh... Yes, <laughs> this was British drawing room right. comedy style. Right, right. And you better speak the right way, but it it had its good points. The fencing program was wonderful. Yeah. And I had a little tiny. Her name was Nell Carter, and she taught Shakespeare. Okay, I've heard of her. And she was just. Wonderful. That's where I got my love from it. Right. Yeah. And it, have you ever been in a New York show or something like that where they try to force the Stanislavski method or Meisner or anything like no, that? No. No. My yeah. New York stuff, I, I Trojan Women at Circle in the Square, and then, um, oh dear, I have to, I have okay. to. <laughs> Wait a minute. Cheat, cheat. Cheat, cheat. <laughs> where is he? I should have written it on my forehead like Marilyn Brown. Yes. Wait a minute. You know, the one about the soldier. Come on, help me out. Soldier's Tale? I don't know. No, 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 no. no. Uh, the Hostage. Oh, uh, The Hostage, at right, yeah. Sheridan Square Playhouse. Okay. Um, that, that was the classic audition when um, 
the director at my audition said, now you've got to sing something. And I said, well, I really don't sing very well. He said, well, just sing when Irish eyes are smiling. So I launched into it and I got the role. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was fun, and then that was I, in an, a British accent when I was working. Did you try the Irish? Irish, Irish yeah. Which then I understudied well. my claim to Broadway at the Booth Theatre. I understudied an English play called Hail Scrodite. Don't ask me who it was by. Okay. It ran a full three weeks, maybe, but it was directed by Alan Arkin. Oh wow! And he was simply, he was so sweet. Right. It was wonderful. But you could work with director. I mean, actors, American actors went to the actor studio, learned it differently than you. Yes. Right? Oh, yes. The yes. whole conglomerate could yes. work. I have an actor down there um, at Brookfield um, who's did Meisner, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been talking to me about a lot of that, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoy hearing it. Yeah. 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 I've been, I have a student that is now at the Neighborhood Playhouse oh, that really? is indoctrinated in Meisner. It's the Meisner place. It's the Meisner so place. she's indoctrinated and it works. Yes. It works. But it, it works for some people and doesn't for other people. And, well, what and I it want, can work. Yes. Yeah. Reality is, is what I look for. Right. Absolutely. In, in everything. Realism. Acting or, or right. directing or anything. Right. But you didn't finish what okay. you, about what you, your first show here is. Oh, my first show here, sorry. Yes. That's what you're going to get. Yeah, Taming of the Shrew is going to be in uh, April. And it's set in... It's set in uh, 1930s wow. fascist Italy. Wow. Padua. But at, at that time, I learned, that I looked it up, is that there was a suffragette movement. So at that time, of course, it was probably pretty small, but at that time, you know, there's... So Kate the Shrew is going to be basically the suffragette. Um, representative oh, that should be for that. Yeah, so I, I, it's really going to be great for Lisa Bonelli to do costuming for her. It's fun playing around with Shakespeare. Yes, yes. We did at Stratford um, A Love's Labour's Lost, which was directed by Michael Kahn. Okay. And I was playing the Princess of France, and I came down the aisle on a motorcycle in a silver oh, lame pantsuit. And we did a school... In, inside? Yes. Wow. It, and we did a school season prior to the regular season, and all the kids' legs were out, and my great joy was into my motorcycle. I oh, didn't hit them. No taping of this. No, not, not out there. Well, we're running out of time, and I just wanted to say thank you so much. It's been incredibly interesting. And it's been great fun, Robin. Yeah. I didn't think it would, but it has been. <laughs> I try to make it somewhat. Um, so uh, we'll see you at the Playhouse for Chaming of the Shrew. And please go see Lion in Winter, which is happening in March. Thanks.